So it's very easy to go down a rabbit hole of random number generating research. I'm speaking from personal experience here. Um, but another really key topic in this idea and where it intersects with computer graphics is Perlin noise. Um, Perlin noise is um, an algorithm developed by Ken Perlin in the early 1980s for use in computer generated imagery. Um, and has it's been in countless films, games, things like that. Um, it's used to generate realistic uh, smoke, explosions, terrain, and actually won an Academy Award um, for its huge, huge impact in computer graphics in the entertainment industry. Um, Perlin noise, is a little weird. It's hard to kind of conceive uh, how this works. And we're not going to get into kind of the mathy details of this here. Um, but let's go ahead and try this because it gives us a much different result. In the last video, we saw Brownian motion, which is really jagged and seems like, um, you know, ants and insects roaming around or flying around. Perlin noise, on the other hand, gives you these very smooth transitions of um, value that much more mimic uh, things like clouds, terrain, smoke, and stuff like that. Um, now you could implement your own version of Ken Perlin's original algorithm, but easier is to use uh, P5JS's built-in noise function, which does just that. It makes it a lot easier. Um, we're going to talk in a moment about what these do, but we're going to create two variables that will help kind of control our noise. And the first one is called detail. And I've picked some numbers here that I think are going to be good starting points, but the first thing I would suggest doing is experimenting and see what happens. Um, so we have detail and we have increment. Um, detail is kind of self-explanatory. That's how much detail is in the noise. Um, and increment is how quickly, so if you think back to the linear congruential generator that we saw in the random seed example, it's this kind of chain of random numbers. Um, increment in Perlin noise is very similar and it's how big of a step we take. So how quickly it's going to jump. And we'll see how this looks in a second. Once again, I'm just gonna add no loop to my setup. Um, I'm gonna remove background here in the draw. And um, we want to be able to use these two values uh, for our Perlin noise so we can use this noise detail command. Um, and we put in detail here. Um, eight is another setting. You can try experimenting with this and see how it works, but I think eight is going to be a good sort of general purpose. Um, okay, so now in order to access this Perlin noise in a way that's going to be actually visible to us um, easily, we're going to actually kind of jump ahead a little bit. We're going to talk about pixels and images in the next project, I think. Um, but for now, you can just trust me that we need load pixels and update pixels. And that lets us access and change the pixels, all the pixels inside of our sketch. So with that done, um, we can do a nested for loop that'll let us walk through every pixel in the image. like that, super. Now, this is basically just to get us all set up. Um, now we want to get a value from Perlin noise for each X and Y coordinate on the screen. And I'm gonna create a variable here. And to do that, we use this function or this command called noise. And noise is going to want two numbers. It's gonna want um, an X and a Y. And it's going to give us back a result between 0 and 1. So if I do x times increment, y times increment, that's going to give us a number between 0 and 1. If we want to make this a grayscale pixel value, then we can multiply that by 255. Um, so this gives us essentially a random number be um, between 0 and 255, but it's using Ken Perlin's algorithm rather than the built-in linear congruential random number generator from P5JS. And we're going to get that smooth cloud-like thing instead of totally jumpy. From there, then, we can just say set x, y, gray. And that's going to change the pixel value at x and y to this number. And let's run this and see what it looks like. So here's my super nice looking Perlin noise. If I run this again. 
we get this sort of beautiful cloud-like thing. Now we could try changing some of these numbers and see how it changes it. So detail is the amount of detail in the image. If I make this lower, it's much, it's kind of like lower contrast. We can even make this smaller or we can go up really high. And I think contrast is kind of a good way of explaining this here. But I found, I've been using Perla noise for a long time. I think it's good to just experiment and see what looks good to you. Um, so I'm going to go back to 0.6. That was my default. And then increment is going to be, again, this kind of like jaggedness. So instead of 0 0.002, if I make it 0 0.2, actually now you can start to see it repeating, which is really not what we want. Here it's much, uh, you know, the sharper transition from dark to light, back to what we had here, where we could go even smaller. And then again, it's really washed out and fine. There's kind of a thin range of like useful values for Perla noise here. Um, but this can be really cool. You could start thinking about ways of using this gray value instead of um, pixels, could you have it be above a certain threshold where it would draw a circle as a result or something? Again, plugging in the ideas that we've used so far. Um, but Perla noise is a really important one in the history of computer graphics, so I think it's nice to show you. And in the next example, we'll look at how to use Perla noise to create wave-like motion and um, very realistic kind of things, again, using random numbers from Perla noise.